day 10. So are you ready to make this beautiful wooden crafted plane? It has a nice texture and everything. I think this is a good example of uh, a hard edge model. I think someone requested me in YouTube as well. So let's get started. We'll start with a cube, actually two cube, one for the front part of the body and one for the second one. Uh, ignore the mask part. It was um, my experiment which didn't really work. So yeah, um, increase the resolution of your um, second cube because you want to trim that, make a nice hard edge. Um, it'll take a while to get the right shape, but don't give up. Um, use another cylinder to make the, you know, the pilot sitting area, whatever it is. So you select both, um, make the cylinder invisible and then you voxelate it by merging them to create, create that boolean. Okay, make sure you observe where there are hard edges and where there are soft edges because this is a toy and you want to sort of make soft edge but you want to it looks like the the model is really sand to give a nice round edges uh, really okay so after this um, two cubes once I'm happy with the edges and shape I've merged them together and I continue to use trim tool to get the kind of shape I'm looking for um, trim tool is really key when it comes to hard edges modeling in a matte sculpt. You might want to sometimes soften the edge and then, you know, use a um, pinch tool to get nice sharp edges. So the front part I'm imagining as three different pieces, three different cylinders. Um, the middle one is sort of a smaller cylinder sandwiched between two or which has a kind of a nuts, the bolt and nuts around, around it. And obviously you have a couple of more cylinders in the front where the blade joins. Um, that's the easy part. I've used a little bit lengthy process here. Like I've used one cylinder and then I've separated them in three. You might not want to do that. You can actually use three different cylinders, put them together, but make sure the middle cylinder is smaller than the other two. Um, that way the middle cylinder will stand out a little bit. Now I've added a light dark, a little bit dark texture here just to make it look a little bit different part than the other two. All right, so for the wings, it's pretty straightforward. So you have a cube, but then what I've done is to get those rounded edges, I've used cylinder um, and make sure you reduce the deep subdivisions of your cube to like two or three and then use transform tool to get this nice shape and when you mask it and when you invert the mask and then when you transform it it kind of uh, does only to the part which is unmasked i thought that was nifty to add cube and cylinder to get that form um and then obviously you'll have to merge it so i've uh, created the first half and then i've duplicated it and flipped it and then obviously again i've merged it so I'm going to duplicate this whole thing for for the bottom wing. So you won't really increase your workflow by duplicating stuff and then you know modifying, tweaking it. And obviously two wings are joined by those two cylinders at each side. So that's pretty straightforward. So every 3D software gives you tools and then you have to use it in the right way to get like, you know, nifty solutions. Sometimes you will come up accidentally or intentionally with some really good solutions, nifty ones. So in this project, we are making a wooden toy, which is made up of different parts and then put together. So your 3D model in the end should give that indication. I actually would love to try this same project on Forger as well, because now you have a 3D modeling mode in Forger. I don't know if you guys have tried Forger. Um, it's really worth um, buying and using. Um, so tail here, I've used cube, uh, same technique basically, cube and then trimming, trim it and uh, voxel it and sharpen edge or round edge, depending on what we are after. So, so as you noticed, I was still trimming the body. I was still working on it. So sometimes that happens you'll have to keep doing stuff until you get it right. All right, this is again, uh, you can use um, cube or maybe duplicate your wing and then trim it further. 
um, that's what I've done here. It, it took a while for me to actually get that shape. It appeared very simple, like just a, like a 3D triangle, but obviously that wasn't the case. Sometimes I feel drawing something is so much easier than creating something in 3D. So yeah, continue using your trim tool reasonably. Sometimes you want to go back a couple of steps, undo and redo and get, finally you'll achieve um, the shape you're after. This took a while for me, even the, the blades uh, took some time to get that shape I was looking for. We all are no expert, we're all learning, trying, so. Um, Sometimes what I do is I used uh, like a soft um, but very low intensity flat brush on the edges and then I soften it to get like um, indication of round edges using smooth tool or smooth brush. Um, the tricky part was to make the tires because uh, you see they are a little bit um, convexy like the outer part is has a lesser diameter than the inner part. I hope that makes sense. Um, so we'll come to that eventually but I've used spear there. Um, again you have all the primitives and tools at your disposal but it's up to, re up to you really to make the best use of it and come up with more creative ideas. Right, so this is the, the tire I was talking about. So I used spear and to get, you know, this kind of shape. And then I've added a torus in the middle and I've created a Boolean sort of thing. It's very um, common. Um, all the wooden toys sort of have a similar design when it comes to tires. For the blades, again, I'd used cube and then I trimmed it to get sort of that shape. And if you notice, the blades are a little bit um, twisted. It's something like, you know, which a normal fan has to, um, so that when it rotates, it kind of throws the air. So yeah, what I did was I used uh, pivots. I changed the pivot a little bit and then I rotated it a bit to get the, the shape I was after. So that's exactly what I've done here. Um, it's hard sometimes in Nomad because you don't have so much control over each vertex. Right, so I've used array tool here. So I've added one spear and then I've used array, added a um, few more spears. Um, in the radial symmetry and then I've just uh, kind of um, um, placed it in such a way that you know it sits around the cylinder yeah area tools are a little bit tricky it takes a while a little bit of practice to to get a hang of it so yeah, sometimes it's like, you know, when you're looking at 2D reference and you're trying to make a 3D stuff, you will have to make some decisions because you can't look all sides of your model. So you'll have to probably have some more reference or I think that's a good part. Like, you know, you can make a creative decision and tweak or create some variation in your model. And then obviously for texturing, you'll have to change it from Metcap to PBR. And yeah, so for texturing, I've um, got this wooden texture. I'm using it like a, as a stamp and I've kept my fall, fall of, um, I've not kept it very straight. And that's how it is blending very nicely. Um, so make sure you you know, follow those brush settings, which I did here to get that this kind of texture. And where you see like, you know, the dark texture, I just reduced the colored a little bit more grayer side. So that way the texture gets a little bit more dark. And you see the left side in the spear, texture spear, it's a little bit more grayer. So complete white gives you exactly same texture, but a little bit grayer will make your texture a little bit more darker. 
and I use that mostly places where it's like a false ambient occlusion so the places where two parts are joining or or like the places where the light don't reach I kind of um, put a little bit darker texture there so the texture is same but um, I just reduce the, the whiteness I'll make it a little bit more grayer in the color settings and then I use this texture you can actually sculpt as well after texturing to give those bumpiness and a um, little bit more detailings. Again, I'm using a little bit darker texture in some areas um, strategically. <laughs> I think we're sort of ready now to do our light settings in scene. So yes, um, let's put a little bit lights. Now I usually use two planes, one below and one the left side to have a better control over light settings. You have to group all the parts together so that you have freedom to rotate your model the way you want it. Um, it's important for posing. You just drag one above the other and that way it will start grouping together. So aim is to have one, just one group. Because then you want to just select that group and then when you rotate it, um, the entire model rotates, not just one part. Okay, it's time to reduce the environmental lights uh, almost to nil. See, now what I'll do here, I'll just rotate the whole model so that, you know, we can pose it correctly. Okay, idea is to create the combination of strong and soft lights. You don't want to give indication of this model sitting right below midday sun or in a very bright area. So you need to control lights in such a way that you get highlights, you get shadow, you get a bit of everything. You want to sort of use three different lights. So one which is bright and sort of um, focusing your plane. Second is more like a filling the entire scene. And that's a little bit of moderate intensity. And third is something that gives uh, a nice shadow. So, you know, your 3D model pops up a little bit. You can see a good form. So one of the lights I've used here is Spotlight. Spotlight creates like a nice strong um, highlights. Obviously it'll take a while. Um, get the lights placed in the right position. Also make sure your model is a good decent size and not very small or tiny. If you want to increase size of your model, like you know, to make the lights behave the way you want them to. Because if your model is really tiny in the scene, then you'll struggle a little bit with the lights. Again, hierarchy and group will help because then you can increase the size of your plane. Okay, I'll make sure you use a little bit sharpness to get a, like a nice hard edge in your model. I've used a little bit curvature as well to, to again highlight the, the corners and edges. I've used almost every feature in the post-processing. <laughs> um, bit of everything really under tone mapping you'll have a good option to increase the brightness and contrast of your render bit of saturation also helps uh, when it comes to color grading especially when you have textured your model so there we have our plane i hope you like this video i hope you learned something and i hope you enjoyed it this is art mellow see you in the next video bye